parceiros? Bom, vamos nos precipitar, tá bom? Ah! Que... que tipo de criança inventa um mig invisível? E a mamãe disse que doce demais dá dor de barriga, mas eu falei... Uhum. Ai, meu Deus. Poluiu geral. Mil desculpas. De rosa só? Por... John, uh, as I was watching uh, If... Uh, my mind just went back to when, when I was, I don't know, five or six, and I had Sparky, my own imaginary friend who used to live in the living room window. So, uh, yeah, he was there. I had to get, get really close with my eyes and to the glass, and, you know, he was a friend. That's so, amazing. Uh, that's my, that's my uh, daughter's imaginary friend's name, too, Sparky. Oh, cool. So we have yeah. something in common. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Uh, for how long the idea of imaginary friends were uh, was uh, poking around your brain until you you, you actually wrote it down? Um, great question. It was about ten years. I had the idea. I was thinking about it, but I knew that I didn't want to do a movie that just was silly and fun uh, with imaginary friends. I wanted it to have depth and remind me of those movies that I grew up with, um, with as a kid. You know, whether it's E.T. or Goonies or any of these movies, I think that what those movies did was give such credit to kids that, that they would be able to handle big themes and big emotions. And um, I think that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a movie that would emotionally impact kids as much as it did entertain them. And then I was watching my daughters. Uh, I would stand in the doorway and watch them go through all their imaginary games and whether it was a dance party or a tea party, or they were just doing voices to each other, they were somewhere else. They were so authentically not in the living room. They were gone somewhere else. And yeah. I thought it would be so amazing to write uh, about that. And then the pandemic hit and I actually watched them uh, slowly, their lights dimmed and they stopped imagining as much and they started asking questions. And you know, for two little girls, the big question was, are we gonna be okay? And I said, that's it. I have to write a movie about that magical world that you go to it never leaves. You can always go back there. And yes, we absolutely have bad days. Bad days are a real thing. But you can always go back to that source of joy and hopes and dreams that you created. And that was the that was the idea behind the movie. Cool. Um, Kaylee, most of the characters you meet throughout if are imaginary ones, uh, meaning that uh, they were not actually on the set with you as well. So uh, how was the process of creating that world that pretty much existed in your head? And how how helpful was John th throughout the process? <laughs> um, he was very helpful, I think. I think you were very helpful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was actually, I was very worried about that whenever we started shooting. I I didn't know what to expect really. But um, for the ifs that are in the movie a lot that I interact with, we had, I guess you could say, would you say like an actor? Actually, then, yeah. So that we had someone to interact with, so we weren't just talking to nothing. So that was really helpful, just to have someone to play off of. And then sometimes we would have puppets <laughs> or stuffed animals or like cardboard cutouts. I'm trying to think of what else. That was basically. But um, yeah, that was it. And thankfully, whenever we would interact with one, you would always show us what it looked like, so we didn't. I basically uh, became the characters by attacking them with puppets and stuffed animals and things like that. So I probably took a little too much joy doing that, but um, it was really fun to do. My whole thing was, listen, I didn't know how good Kaylee was until the first day of shooting. I knew that she was great from the audition, but I didn't know that she was good enough to act with a hot dog on a popsicle stick. And, and I, so we, she didn't need anything, but I gave her as much as I could because for me, it was about making every day feel like we were doing a play, that it was just for us that one day uh, rather than a movie and just make it feel intimate and real and as fun as we could, as much fun as we could have. So, John, you amassed quite a, an impressive voice cast from, from Steve Carell to Phoebe Waller-Bridge to Emily Blunt and George Clooney and, and the late, great uh, Louis Gossett Jr. So... How challenging was it directing the animated portion of the movie? And, and how was it to give a chance to newbies such as this uh, Brad Pitt fellow? So how was it? <laughs> um, listen, I've always been charitable in my casting. And so I really think Brad Pitt's going to turn into something, I promise. Um, no, I mean, for me, it was it was really interesting. Two parts to that question, which are great. The, the casting process, I had people in my head of what I wanted to do, but I didn't know that they'd all say yes. Not only did they all say yes, but they said yes so quickly. I was incredibly moved. And it was because, yes, they were doing a favor for me. But they also said that they really believed in the idea of the movie and putting good out into the world right now was something that we all needed. And so they got on board. 
But I, to your other part of the question, it was really wild to shoot an entire movie with Kaylee and Ryan and then record most of the voices. You know, Steve, Phoebe, and um, Louis Gossett Jr. had all recorded before the movie, just a temp version so that they could hear. Um, but all the other actors hadn't recorded yet. And so it really was three movies. You directed a movie with them. You directed these movies and created these ifs on the side. And then actually merging the two of them was a whole separate thing because they weren't in the same room. And so you have to find rhythms together and all that stuff. And that was a wild process, but it's definitely the hardest I've ever worked on a movie, but also the one I got the most joy out of. This is, uh, she just saw it last night. And I will say the only other person I'm more scared to have watch it are my kids. But last night when I walked in and saw her face, it, it uh, all, everything I worked hard for was worth it. So uh, first of all, congratulations on the on the on the movie. I, I thought it was very it was very sweet, and I, I, I was wondering how, how was it working with someone so young as Kaylee Fleming and so and so uh, 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 vibrant as her on set. Well, I'm very lucky, aren't I, to have had someone as like Kaylee. I mean, she's so assured and so um, advanced. She's had some experience. I think she had been in a TV series, but. Her ease, her friendliness, her lack of ego, her joy in the novelty of each scene, her preparation, everything. She was a delight to work with. And we got on very well. And it's been lovely to see her today. We haven't met for a year, so it was lovely to see her. And oh, uh, nice. she's a lovely person. Yeah. Is it is it always that that easy or or uh, uh, not always? Well, the, I don't. I mean, I mean, the work environment. Or oh, the work environment was particularly nice on this. Uh, partially, I think children are very good people to have on sets because they make everybody's behavior a bit better. Even the cinematographer's language has to be tempered slightly <laughs> as a child. So I think in a way it, it makes everybody more civilized. Um, also, of course, children can't work the same hours as the adults. Yeah. So Sometimes they have to go in order to do some study or they have to go and stop for the end of the day. They can't start at the beginning of the day and, you know, they we no longer send them up chimneys. So I think very often the end of the day is when the camera turns around on the adults. Um, so in that way, it's a slightly different set than if you're just playing with adults. But it's a very pleasant atmosphere. And of course, this was a very domestic story until it isn't. And I was very much part of the domestic part of it. So yeah. the reality of it was very comfortable to be in and uh, um it's curious when you see when you see the reality of it because it's it's about you know it's a fantasy it's about imaginary friends and and, and you did a lot of, of genre work throughout the years you did uh, uh from true detective to 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 ender to obviously uh, uh harry potter so uh how how important it is to have like an active imagination when working in this kind of projects well i think probably all actors should have an active imagination. I think because the only thing an actor can bring uh, to something is a very intense point of view. Um, all of us are interesting, you know. Many actors are not as interesting as my next door neighbor. You know, that's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but good actors are interesting and they may not be even particularly interesting as people, but they're interesting because they have um, some sort of violent connection between their subconscious and their conscious. So they're often highly energized, which is why normal people often find actors a pain because they're annoying, because they're slightly flaky, because they're not so rooted. Somebody said to me once, you know, actors are air. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. You know, yeah. whereas, you know, you hope an engineer is earth and maybe a musician is fire, but actors are air. And it doesn't mean that they're airy or unreliable necessarily morally or they're hopeless, but they have to live in that place where an idea, which is a very quick thing, can flash across their brains and emit from their eyes. And not everyone can do that. Well, that's awesome. Um, you, you, you mentioned working with, with, with kids and obviously you, you did the Harry Potter series, which I think is the thing that you are most uh, recognized uh, uh, from. So now that we are uh, more than two decades apart from the first Harry Potter movie, can, can you look back at the experience and, 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 and take a step back and say, 
that was really special. So how, how was it in your in your recollection? Well, my life and you know, film film is a moment captured and is then, you know, played out for years and decades all over yeah. the world. But actually, at the time I was doing Harry Potter, I was doing Medea on Broadway. Yeah. And so, you know, that was much more my preoccupation. I was doing eight shows a week on Broadway. And one on, I think on the second film I finished on a Saturday night, flew to London on Sunday morning, arrived in Sunday night to London and was on the Harry Potter set on Monday morning at 6 a.m. So I was wow. very often fitting Harry Potter around my career. It was not my career, you know, it was this lovely thing that we met and Richard Griffiths, who played my husband, that was an enchanting man, full of imagination and a wonderful calligrapher. He had wonderful handwriting and he's a huge loss. And I was also great friends then with Harry Melling, who played my son, who was a young yeah. actor then, and has subsequently played my son in Mother Courage at the National Theatre as an adult. So they've all grown up under our eyes and that's been a great pleasure. Wow. Wow.